Hey y'all, Van Lufa here again. I guess I'm back to covering court cases. Um, please excuse the frizzy uh, air dried hair today. So I have been watching and been interested in the case of the Molly Tibbetts disappearance. Uh, the person who has been charged with her murder is Christian Bahena Rivera. So I was just going to give you a little bit of background of the case and what happened and, uh, you know, just a little bit about what led us here today. I did actually follow this case when she was still a missing person back three years ago. So, okay, Molly Cecilia Tibbetts it was from Brooklyn, Iowa. And I think that's why it interested me because I'm from Nebraska, Iowa's next door, blah, blah, blah. She was 20 years old at the time of her death. She was on summer break from the University of Iowa where she was a psychology major. She, like I said, she was 20 when she died. She went missing on July 18th of 2018. Her body was found August 21st of 2018 in a cornfield. She went jogging that night as she usually does. So she was an avid jogger. It was not surprising for anybody to see her out on the road jogging. And also up to note, Brooklyn is a teeny tiny town in Iowa with a population of about 1,500. So kind of everybody knows everybody in that kind of situation. She worked for a uh, daycare for the hospital there called uh, Grinnell Regional Medical Center. And so that was her job was to take care of kids. Um, how this kind of all got started or how she became a missing person was that she did not show up the next day to work, which would have been uh, Thursday, July 19th. She went was missing on a Wednesday, July 18th. So that's how they kind of knew that something was wrong because she didn't show up for work, and that was very unlike Molly. So like I mentioned a minute ago, Christian Bahena Rivera was arrested for first-degree murder. He uh, was 24 at the time. And I guess probably what helped them catch him the most was that there was surveillance footage that showed his Chevy, his black Chevy Malibu following her on a jog. So he was kind of in the area, kind of circling around, not really, you know, there for any reason. And uh, the other things that we will hear throughout the trial and things that also led them to charge him was that A, her DNA was found in his car, and B, and most importantly, he led the police to her body. So, seems like a pretty up, open and shut case to me, but we'll uh, we'll see how the rest of the trial goes. I think, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there's three days, and so far. So, I'm listening to day two. So, that is the gist of Molly Tibbetts and what went on there. Um, as far as the lawyers, um, on Monday, May 17th, the jurors were all chosen. The trial will start, uh, and it did start on Wednesday, May 19th. There are seven men and eight women on the jury. The judge is Joel Yates. The prosecutors are Scott Brown, who is the assistant Iowa jury, <coughs> excuse me, the assistant Iowa attorney general, and Bart Claver. The defense attorneys are a husband and wife team, Chad and Jennifer Fries. And then I just uh, read up a little bit on it because of all of the pretrial publicity. The trial was moved several times. I know it was also um, postponed because of COVID and all that kind of stuff, but they finally got started. The trial was moved several times and is now at the Scott County Courthouse in Davenport, Iowa. That's kind of just a really brief overview of the case. And um, on the next videos then, I will start breaking down the days and what people had to say. So follow along here if this type of thing interests you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.